Welcome to our lecture. Uh, for information, this lecture will be recorded. I am Geoffrey Barret, Luxembourg Director of the Confucius Institute at the University of Luxembourg. And on behalf of the team, I am pleased to welcome Dr. Ma Jun, Associate Professor in the School of Computer Science at Fudan University for this lecture entitled AI and Large Models, Are We Close to Artificial Intelligence? Ma Jun's main research area is trustworthy machine learning aiming to design secure, robust, explainable, privacy-preserving and fair machine learning models for diverse AI applications. Today's lecture will present a retrospective approach by examining the key techniques that led to major AI breakthroughs throughout history. By exploring the new knowledge embedded in models from different periods, we hope to gain insight into the emerging intelligence in current large models. Additionally, we will discuss trustworthiness concerns that arise with large models. Before we start, let me just remind you of a few things. This lecture will last about at least give me the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This lecture will last about one hour and we will have around 20 to 30 minutes for an open discussion at the end. During this lecture, please turn off your microphone. If you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to write them in the chat box. Professor Masingjin, thank you very much for being with us today. I will now hand over to you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks very much for the kind introduction and to uh, Geoffrey. Uh, my name is Shinji Ma. Um, my English name is Daniel. Uh, it's very. It's my pleasure to to be here today, and I'm actually from the um, Confucius hometown. Uh, just to talk to Geoffrey, um, and, and very great pleasure to give this talk here. So the, my the title of my talk was uh, AI and uh, large models, and are we close to artificial general intelligence? Um, so okay. okay. So before the talk. Um, I'll give a very brief introduction about myself. Um, I'm currently an associate professor at the School of Computer Science at Fudan University of China. I, I'm also a member of the Fudan Vision and Learning Lab. So we do computer vision and, and deep learning and trustworthy machine learning. I, before Fudan, I was a lecturer at Deakin University, which is in Australia. And I received my PhD degree and also did a roughly uh, one, one half year research fellow at the University of Melbourne uh, in Australia. So my research area as introduced by uh, Geoffrey um, are trustworthy machine learning, uh, deep learning and computer vision. Uh, okay, so uh, we know that, you know, nowadays AI is everywhere. Uh, machine learning models or AI system has been trained and uh, deployed uh, to help IoT in different fields like IoT, security and defense, financial system, which is called the FinTech, uh, autonomous driving, uh, media entertainment, medicine and, uh, and, and, and bio biology, and critical infra infrastructure. Um, so we know the importance of AI. Um, and 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 we hear a lot about AI about the recent big breakthroughs um, AI in the in the, in the history of AI. Um, so um, so yeah. So the reason why I want to talk about the big breakthroughs because um, considering the broader audience here, uh, many of you may just heard like the, the the big events in AI, the big advancement in AI. Not about the technical details, but the big advancement. So the first one is, I think, uh, it happens around time um, 20, 2015, in the year of 2015. Um, so, so people develop this deep neural net, deep neural network. Uh, it's called the ResNet. It's one type of deep neural network. It for the first time, achieved like human level performance on medium scale image recognition. Um, so, there was an image, image recognition competition um, organized by Stanford and this image net. Basically, a large scale data set collected by a Stanford team in Stanford, and they organize this competition every year. And in 
to some extent, and this 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 type of neural net achieves 4.994 test error, which is lower than the human performance 5.1. So the top five error is like giving an image. Uh, so the the image recognition task is given image you recognize uh, the category of the object in an image like a cat, dog, and trucks and planes and so on. So the top five error means uh, given the image uh, if the correct class or the correct object is contained in the top um, the top five most confident prediction of the model and then we 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 take it as a as a correct prediction. Okay, the top one is like uh, the correct class has to be the, the, the has to have the highest probability, the highest confidence. So top five, we rarely lose like uh, performance measurement, but human performance is like 4.5, and, and this model ResNet achieves a uh, um, uh, human level performance. Um, and um, so, so in the recognition, what we uh, what, what we know, like uh, recognize cat and dog, and like thousand categories of objects, is is, is something we know. Uh, but also, that's related to the the field is called computer vision. Uh, actually, we have a lot of big breakthroughs that uh, we may use every day, but we didn't realize it. For example, the first one is the face recognition. Nowadays, we can do medium scale facial recognition with very high high accuracy. Okay, um, and this is the, the this is one a big benchmark face data set that people test uh, algorithms and models on this uh, meeting, uh, on this big big benchmark data set. And also beyond you know, like face, uh, we can even do like leap reading, like even more challenging, more subtle. Um, more challenging tasks, like um, uh, given uh, given a uh, given a sequence of video, and uh, we can read the lips of people seeing, and 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 uh, here is a large scale visual speech learning uh, data set. It's called lip reading data set, and uh, deep learning models can also do quite well on this like uh, uh, challenging tasks. And the next one, big breakthrough happens in around time 2016. Um, probably everyone knows it. Uh, it's called the AlphaGo, uh, which is a, an agent on an algorithm on a model that um, learns to pre to play the game of Go. Um, so it's the first computer program program to be the human Go professional. And uh, here is uh, some statistics. Uh, someone I, I, I think uh, consider someone might interest you to know the training. So the behind behind the AlphaGo is a very deep neural net neural networks. So training those deep neural networks will take roughly three weeks and 340 million training steps with 50 GPUs. Um, and, and and there's some other statistics. Okay, and the outcome is in two thousand in the year of two thousand sixteen. Um, this AlphaGo um, deep learning model they beat both European and World Go champions in the best of five matches. Uh, this 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 photo shows the match between AlphaGo and the Lee Sedol, uh, a, a Korean uh, Go player. Um, and the next one is the big big breakthrough, probably the Alpha Ford. Um, Alpha four, so the lead Alpha four is a is a model re, uh, um, uh, designed by DeepMind. So its its task is to giving a an, a, a, pro, a sequence, giving a, pro, a protein sequence, and it predicts the structure of the protein, uh, the folding structure of the of the protein. So. Um, it was also a, a, a big breakthrough in the biology. I think you know the latest version of AlphaFold. Um, they the they build a, a protein database based on the latest version of AlphaFold, and that database now um, consists of like two hundred million um, structures of proteins and almost one million species, including plants, bacteria, animals, and other organisms. So basically, the AlphaFold um, almost completely solve the problem of uh, the protein um, um, so, uh, protein structure of, of, of folding structure problem okay 
Uh, here's the link if you want to know more. So this problem has a struggled like um, biologist um, um, and a structural biologist for like 50 years. Um, and now we come to the, um, the era of large models. We probably have heard those large models on the Twitter or you know everywhere, almost everywhere, uh, heard a lot of them. So here is a brief recap of how we get so far. So and how large are these uh, nowadays models? So, so in the year of two, 2015, um, and we have the ResNet 50, 50 model, which is at that time was the state of the art. It's only consists of like 23 million parameters. And then in the year of 2018, and uh, we have the BERT, the BERT base. So the BERT is a bidirectional um, um, the transformer structure that's learned as a language model. It's a completely new type of language model which is different to IAN. So at that time, it's uh, also the state of the art. It's a pre-trained. It's a can, basically a model can process languages. And uh, it has 100 million parameters. And in the year of 2021, which is two years ago, and uh, we have the VIT, which is a uh, uh, a vision transformer model, uh, a vision model do vision tasks based on transformer structure. So the VIT large consists of, consists of uh, 300 million um, parameters. So last year, uh, OpenAI released the uh, ChatGPT, which um, uh, attracted a lot of attention and people talk about it and use it and um, and, and, and people are um, um, Talk a lot about uh, how the chat GPT, the 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 the, the, um, uh, scarily good, scarily good performance of chat GPT, and how chat GPT can do a lot of the uh, different tasks that we can uh, we we can't we um, uh, in the past we we don't believe it possible. So sorry. So there is. A... Okay. Right. It seems like something pop up. I'm not sure if it goes goes away. Sorry. Sorry, there was some technical issue. I can't. Let me try to reshare the screen again. Uh, Okay, here we're back. So yeah, so people talk a lot about it, and uh, it's a, definitely considered as one of the largest models so far. And it can it has like one one seven one seventy five billion um, parameters. And uh, ChatGPT is based on transformers and 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 GPT series, right? So so let's have a look of the GPT series, like from GPT one, GPT two, GPT three. And ChatGPT is roughly based on GPT 3.5, so not four, but you know between three and four. So GPT one, we released in uh, year of 2018, 100 million parameters, and GPT two uh, released in 2019 at 1.5 billion, and uh, GPT three released in 2020. Uh, 20, and then that's uh, 175 billion. So the chat GPT parameters is rough guess. It's like a, a people guess that OpenAI okay, didn't uh, increase the model size, but use use more data and 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 the different training scheme to to get the uh, the chat GPT. So the GPT series is like a, a pre-trained language model. It's basically for uh, understanding and compressing the human language. Um, to, to, so in uh, to be specific, like words and sentences and documents, right? To compress all the big big data about uh, text information, uh, language information into uh, those models, those transformer models. Those are the base models. So based on the base models, uh, so we we do something else and, uh, and and tune the model to have the ability to chat, and then we get chat GPT. I'll, I'll talk about the technical detail later. So I released uh, this year, early this year in uh, March, I think it was last month. Um, we have the, the GPT four. GPT four is like a multi model. You can take a, a text and the image of the input and output a, a give you an author. Uh, output a text. So it has 
it's also a, a, a gas. Um, it roughly has one trillion parameters. That's why we call uh, we are in the era of large models. Um, so even loading those models is impossible for most of the research institute. Okay, that may uh, takes um, hundreds of GPUs. So. And um, language model is just the one side of the story. Uh, this is one part of the story, and we have uh, also big vision models because, as we know, as we know, computer vision and uh, NLP are the two mainstream areas, so the big areas in, in AI. So let's have a look of the large models as well. So this, um, so the first one is the stable diffusion, which is a large image generation model, which takes a, a, a text as the input. We call it the uh, text prompt, okay, as input, and it output an uh, image, a generated image released by uh, Stability AI last year in November. It has roughly one billion uh, parameters, and it based on the model. If you don't know that, that's okay. And it's a uh, it's the model is was trained on a Lion dataset. With Lion dataset five B has uh, you know this 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 many text image pairs, which basically we have an image and we have a description of the image all crawled from the internet, okay? And then also it has some uh, other versions, some variants of the Lion dataset. So Lion dataset is behind many of the large vision models. Those are, the, those are, those, those, this is dataset we use in the uh, large vision models. So the second one is large vision model is called the uh, DALI two or it's called LE two or DALI two. Um, it it's released by OpenAI last year in September, and it's also a image generation model, which is very, uh, which is works in the same way as the stable diffusion. Uh, takes a, a text, a, a description as the input, it's generated an image as the output. And it has 3.5 billion parameters, and the base model is uh, GPT-3 because it's yeah, yeah. uh, open AI. So uh, it's based on their uh, three model, so GPT-3 model. And the training data is also a line 5B uh, and plus 10 um, TB web data. Okay, so yeah, the yeah. third vision model that's um, I want to talk, I want to to talk about is the uh, the Google's image imagine or image chain or imagine. Okay, so it's a large image generation model as well, which is similar to DALI two and stable diffusion two. Okay, so it released by Google last year in November. It has a four point six billion parameters, and base model is called T five XX XX L. So T five T series model is also uh, a large um, uh, a large language model. Okay, I think it's also trained on LAN five B. So and also some internal data set. I think I believe you know because Google has that Google image search, they have a lot of a uh, lot more image and uh, text pairs in their database. So I think they train on the image search uh, database. It's called the internal database on 460 million image pairs. And uh, now comes to the uh, chat GPT. So a little bit more information about chat GPT is that uh, it's, a, it's a chat bot, um, it's a dialogue model, a chat bot released by OpenAI. You can um, type in uh, text prompt and questions uh, to ask a chat GPT and chat GPT will give you an answer. Um, it's released by OpenAI in November, 2022, and it has 175B 175 billion billion parameters and uh, yeah, yeah. this model is 3.5. So uh, like how, how, where, you know, what, what, what the data set of, the, what the training data set of ChatGPT? so it has um, a lot of web pages, web web document with basically a web page that can have the, the, the text and uh, all, all different kinds of web pages. It has, it has three, 3.1 billion pages uh, it's roughly equals to 300 billion words or to 320 um, TB um, text data. Okay, it's also trained on Wikipedia. That's why you ask something and it's, it gives you a very accurate answer. Like um, uh, where is the uh, where is something or you know yeah. So it's very like the because it's, it's trained on Wikipedia, so it can give you very accurate answer for certain questions uh, and also books. Uh, digital digital books 
and uh, also Redis. So that's why it can help you to solve, um, to, 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 to debug code and to answer a diverse set of uh, questions, not just about, um, you know, the knowledge sort of style of questions, but also all kinds of uh, different questions. And also human, human uh, written answers. Mm. So a few examples, a few examples about ChatGPT for those who haven't tried ChatGPT yet. Uh, so the first one it can it can do uh, it, it can do is the translation. So from English to Chinese, okay. And the second one is question and answering. So answer questions. So like uh, make an intro, intro uh, introduce introduction about the University of Luxembourg. Uh, and it is to give you a very accurate return um, answer. And also code generation and uh, bug fixing. So for example, here, here's a, a, a basic bus program for performing blah, blah, and, and it will write, uh, it will write a, a, a script for you. And you can just copy the code and use the code. Most of the time is, um, my experience is, uh, yes, it's indeed more, um, more like uh, precise than a stack overflow or exchange, those sort of um, um, uh, firm. So asking chat GBT most of the time will give you a very accurate and the correct, uh, correct answers uh, in terms of the bug fixing and, 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 so, and so on. And uh, besides ChatGPT, actually we have uh, a couple of other large language models. Like uh, uh, ChatGPT is not the only one in the market, and uh, it's the best one. Uh, most people say it's the best one, but it's not the only one. So this one is called the Llama. Llama is a, a large language model released by Meta uh, in February this year. Uh, it has a 65 uh, 65 billion parameters, which is once almost like one third of the uh, um, uh, chat GBT. Uh, so the base model is base model is uh, is, a, is a plain transformer. So uh, the, the difference between let me have a look. Okay, so besides the size it also has a little bit of a difference on um, between the training data of this one chat GBT. So it, this model trains on common core, which is a uh, um, which is an open source project, and people write, uh, people have that uh, crawler, the write a script to crawl uh, web pages um, periodically uh, from the internet, and it has a lot of. It's, it's probably the largest uh, uh, web page data set that we can use at hand. Okay, so it's a it's an open source project. So this is a com it's called the common common crawl and this has a 3.3 tag of uh, byte uh, text and also some C4. I'm not sure what that contains or okay, GitHub. We know that's a, a, a code hosting um, cloud service. People create repositories on GitHub and share code. So GitHub 328 gig gigabytes code and Wikipedia also and books uh, a little bit more books than the chat GBT and archive. Archive is papers, so this model definitely can help you read papers, okay? And Stack Exchange can help uh, answer questions. Um, and it's totaling 1.3 trillion tokens. So um, this is Llama, it's open source, probably the largest open source model so far released by Meta. And uh, we have another, another uh, large language model, it's called the Apoca. Apokai released uh, by a team in Stanford uh, is actually based on Llama 7B. So it's based on uh, one particular version of Llama. It's called the 7B. It's quite uh, 7 billion. It's not a very, um, not a huge one, uh, but it's a small one, small one. Um, um, and uh, it's, it's tuned on Llama. Uh, and and, and what's the, the data used to tune, uh, tune Llama to get the Apka is the instruct, called the instruct follow, following generated answers by open data. So basically, so basically it's used um, the responses or answers generated by the open AI uh, GPT 3.5, uh, basically a chat GPT and, and use 52 k answers, questions and answers, and to tune Lama will give you an APCA. So many people say, say you know, the APCA is probably the 
Um, although it's not very very large, but probably the only not the only, but probably um, the most uh, um, advanced chat chat um, language model or chat bot compared to chat GPT. Okay, so um, there has been a lot of a uh, uh, chat GPT. Um, Chat if you like chatbot released um, in the past uh, few months, and Upcom probably the the uh, the the only one that's open source and um, and uh, has a close performance to Chat Um And now um, OpenAI then released the uh, GPT four in March twenty twenty three. Um, it's a multi model. Um, multi model, big model, uh, also a, a, chat, a, a chat model. So, multi model means it can take uh, a text, probably a question, and an image uh, as an input, and it's an output uh, uh, a text answer, a text answer. So, the input have a multi model, like a text and image, and output is still text. So, it has a um, uh, roughly against uh, one trillion parameters, and its base model is, uh, of course, uh, GPT-4. We we don't know. It's not a, it's not open source. We don't know what exactly the architecture is or how many parameters it is. But this is rough guess based on the performance and uh, some scaling laws of large language model. So, uh, yeah, basically there is something um, we something. So there there is a lot of exper experiment. I think uh, previously conducted by Google says you know we giving this amount of data, giving this many parameters, and roughly you can get this performance. So and and adding data will give you better performance, and uh, using larger and larger model will give you better performance. And there is some uh, some trends that you can have a rough guess. So if if to reach the level the performance level of GPT four, then roughly probably you have to have uh, have have one trillion parameters and uh, and so on, and and you have to train on multi multi model data and uh, much more human human created data. So human uh, written uh, example answers, and um, so that's the that's the first probably uh, uh, multi model we'll talk about. And multi model I want to multi model I want to talk about is uh, make a make a video is um is probably the state of the art AI system that generates videos from text. Previous models, uh, you mean text give you a very uh, photorealistic or artistic uh, style sort of an image. And this one can give you a video, which um, um, is very handy uh, if you want to, you know, it's very funny videos. Uh, actually, I think this video is playable. Let me try it. Oh, it's a flying dog. So it's a dog wearing a superhero outfit with red uh, red cape flying through the sky. And uh, this, all, this also can, yeah, vo voyaging um, a boat, a ship. So this uh, this model released one in September twenty twenty two. I believe they will release uh, quickly re release a, a, a new version soon. So and uh, the next multi model model I want to talk about is uh, the Sam, which is released just a couple of days ago. I think last week, probably this week or last week. It's also released by uh, a team in Meta. And uh, basically, you can do segmentations in a more um, more flexible way, more interactively, like uh, automatically to segment all these different uh, types of elements inside of the image, and also segment interactively, like you click somewhere and it will give you a segmentation. Okay, so it's very easy to. Very handy, very easy to use for I think many of the downstream tasks. And this segment with prompt, like if you want to find a dog, find a cat, which side of the image, find someone, and it will become uh, useful to you. And uh, following the the, the 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 bottom row shows even more examples. Okay, so the, this uh, this model is called segment anything. So it's called Sam segment anything. So. And uh, it's a it's a it's a very um, um, it's already although it's released just about a week it's already becomes a very popular uh, segmentation segmentation model um, 
Yeah, I thought it might be interesting to to mention it. So, uh, so those are what's going on um, in, in large models. Um, at least the, uh, the some some very 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 famous model. Uh, but in this talk, I want to go back in history to have a look of what, what's going on in the AI history and and how or why why we're we here today and why we have these large models and 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 and. Um, um, and how they are different from the 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 traditional models. Yeah. Okay. So the first one is you know that's between probably the 1970s or 80s. We call it the expert system. Probably the first generation of AI systems. So AI AI models. Um, those systems are mostly uh, computer programs that simulate a set of fixed roles. Uh, for decision making in spe specific domains or tasks. And then later on, we have the handcrafted features. We have some input, for example, images or texts or videos. And we want we, we design, manually design some of the features to extract, for example, shapes, contours, you know, styles, color, and, and, and so on. And we use this information to train. Uh, a lightweight like a uh, traditional machine learning model like SVM and, and and linear regression and linear model and so on and we do some classification uh, or, or regression tasks so that that's called the the era of handcrafted features and uh, people have uh, created a designed a lot of um, uh, very useful features uh, but it's not as powerful as deep learning the, the deep learning trees um, learning and machine learning and AI in a different way. Uh, first of all, deep means deep new networks. So a new network then has more than two layers. It can be called a deep new network, but mostly uh, the nowadays deep new networks consider uh, consist of uh, hundreds or thousands or even more layers. Um, so at that time, so a new network has like five, six, ten layers. It's called deep new networks. Um, deep new networks. So deep learning is based on deep neural networks and is um, train a model on uh, raw data. For example, as um, um, <clears throat> sorry. So for example, thousands of images or uh, some some documents, and and to to automatically learn and extract features from the from the training data. So now we don't need to design what features we want to to find from those data. Uh, we just set up some objective and the, the deep neural nets can automatically learn that features. And, um, and even though most of the time we don't even understand, so human don't even understand what features learn by deep nets, but it works. Um, and it works um, much better than the kind of corrupted features. And now uh, I would call this year from onwards from year 2022, uh, because last model era. And we train extremely large models on massive web data. And we and those models seem to generalize very well to very complex tasks, even though, even though those downstream tasks, uh, the model has never seen uh, this downstream task. We call it the zero shot um, general generalization. Um, so uh, tasks like language translation or question answering, image generation, and many more can be easily done by these uh, large, large models. So there is a so large models are mostly deep neural nets, um, but extremely large. But there is fundamental difference between this uh, the deep learning uh, era and the large model era. Um, people find that when you grow the size of the model to um, you know billion billion or above, uh, you already hundred billion or above, something magic will something magical magically <laughs> happen. Something will magically uh, happen. Uh, like the zero shot uh, generalization, so you can ask the model to do so something that it's never, uh, never, never, uh, never did, um, and and ask the model to do a uh, uh, tons of downstream tasks, not even uh, not just one task and so on. Um, so let's uh, take a closer look at you know in those 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 AI systems. So um, by looking at those the AI, you know, uh, inside of the system, how they're trained to get more understanding of these systems, and then uh, we, we try to reach a conclusion like, um, are we close to general uh, artificial general intelligence? So general intelligence that 
It's like uh, we have an AI model and it can act and behave and learn like humans. Uh, and you can do, so one single model can do many tasks like just humans. You can read, you can listen to the music, you can planning, you can do planning, you can, you know, work and study and sleep and, and so on. So that's, that's the ultimate goal of AI. So artificial in general intelligence, the AGI. Okay. So, uh, in the past, we believe that this is not, not possible. Um, not possible means, uh, because. What we are doing along the way of AI history is computing, mostly computing. We design models, we, we compute something based on data, we compute something, we extract something. And uh, this used to be, this, this approach in general used to be uh, believed like uh, this is not impossible to reach some, you know, general artificial intelligence. We probably can do very, very well. You can, you know, um, um, beat humans in some specific task like uh, image recognition or something, but in general, it cannot reach the level of human intelligence. Uh, but now I think probably we have to uh, change that, you know, uh, change that belief. Uh, but anyway, so let's have a look at the details. So expert system, uh, usually we have a we have we have a knowledge base basically it's based on a, a specific area or domain. We design a lot of roles. Like uh, here's the example. So it's, it's Kala is um, a dog. Uh, so Kala is a dog. Dog. Dogs have four legs, and then Kala should, you know, must have four legs because Kala is a dog. This sort of a rules, and uh, it can be uh, represented by log a lot of uh, logical expressions, uh, like logics, like fact one, fact two, and or there's the many um, relationships. And then there's an inference machine. So the inference can interact with the user inference, and the user will ask questions and ask you for advice for prediction and the inference machine will you know, try to pull this role from the knowledge base and try to build this graph and you know, if, else, if, else, and then, and, you know, and, and finally give you a recommendation, give you a, give you a result. So we need a role engine and uh, with predefined logical roles. And of course, most importantly, the expert system, you know, from the literally we need human expert human experts. So because only the human experts know that many, that, that much knowledge about one specific field and that, that knowledge can, you know, um, um, can cover all these different types of, uh, 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 uh cases, like, uh, can cover like, uh, uh, diverse real, real world sort of, uh, scenarios. Uh, we need this, uh, um, expert level knowledge, not, not, not general, uh, not, um, uh, no one's knowledge. Okay, so that's that's the expert system. So the second uh, uh, generation of AI system, uh, we based on the manually designed features. So the idea is that at this time we probably can already collect a bunch of data. For example, the face images. We we want to do face recognition. Uh, but we don't have roles like, um, you know, you know, there, there are probably some roles like to do face matching, but we, we in, in terms of, uh, you know, finding your identity for, for your face image, there, there's too many roles. Uh, or, or we don't even have roles. It's very, very difficult to find roles, but we, we do, we can, we have features, right? So we can extract features from those face images, then we can define roles or learn, learn uh, to face recognition based on features. So, um, so, so at that time, people believe that only features makes um, your image meaningful, not the image itself, not the pixel. Um, to make them meaningful, you have to design a feature and the features means something. Uh, at that time, that's, you know, that's the, that's the era that's, um, uh, machine learning are easily explainable, like uh, explainable and understandable. So, um, because like everything is, every decision is made based on the features and these features are human understandable, it's human designed, you know, manually designed and they are uh, interpretable. So anyway, so the example of the features, like we can have this shape of uh, filters, you know, we can have this, uh, uh, this this vector like white and black and and, and we can use this vector placed on a different uh, part of the image and we can extract some numbers or some uh, values and that can tell us uh, tells us that the features for example so usually like you have the nose on the left is uh, slightly darker on the right is slightly darker and in the middle you have the nose and and then probably um, lighter and 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 if if it's a human 
you know, nodes area, it will give you certain um, values. So it's not a nodes area, but it's, it's, a, it's a face, and then it will uh, check, check, and so it will be probably different. So anyway, so you can define those uh, filters to extract the age features, the uh, line features, or uh, center surrounded features. Okay, so based on those features, you can train some some linear classifier, um, uh, or even do some um, thresholding, like blow this feature, um, blow this threshold uh, above this threshold, blow this threshold. Uh, we can consider as a match or, or, or not match. But anyway, so uh, and, uh, the other examples of manually designed features called shift shift features, shift features they call the invariant features. For example, scale invariant. So we um, we don't sampling the image pixel from the image. So we make it smaller, smaller, and smaller, and um, and so that so that we if a model train train on this uh, pyramid, like uh, we have seen these different scales of the image, and it, the model must uh, uh, must you know we expect the model uh, learns the to be scale invariant, learns to recognize correctly all these different scales of images. Uh, that's the robustness uh, what we, we want, the ability we want from models. Uh, shift invariance is focused on the local pace or lighting is invariance uh, or rotation invariance. So rotation means like uh, we draw small rectangles, um, local rectangles. Local means that like small rectangles inside of the image. And we call this one of the rectangles a descriptor or something. And they, for example, we can have 1,000 rectangles drawn in here, and each rectangle will give us a, a number. And uh, so even if you rotate this photo, this image, rotate in a different way, uh, but the rectangle will extract, if you rank those uh, extracted features, will probably be the same. Because basically, uh, if we randomly put rectangles on the, on the, on the image, and um, even if you rotate, you probably extract the same thing after some sort of a sorting uh, um, or, or sorting or ranking. So that's called the shift features. It's also manually designed. Um, now, even nowadays, we still use these shift features to perform some uh, vision tasks on um, uh, devices with limited uh, limited uh, computational resources. Uh, like um, a moving device or um, some small mobile device or, um, or something similar. So, and uh, then we move on from handcrafted features to deep learning. Actually, deep learning has a quite long history. I think this is happened in the year of uh, uh, end of uh, the 20th century, the year of 1998. This Yonlequin designed this uh, LeNet. It's a convolutional neural network, uh, specifically designed to processing vision vi visual tasks, like to recognize uh, the numbers uh, from the handwritten uh, the handwritten numbers from the from the image, like one two three or eight. So to to recognize, for example, the zip code uh, or um, uh, check um, uh, or checks. Okay, so this is just a five five means five layers. So this is a five layer convolutional neural network, very simple, but it opens the uh, I think it's opening the door of deep learning. Uh, this is not the first convolutional neural network. Neural network to um, the first convolutional neural network is the, uh, is uh, it's, um, uh, I think it's a designed by. Uh, by someone from uh, Japan. So I can't remember exactly his name, but this is not the one. But this is the one can be called like probably deep or can be called the, the first uh, most successful application of conv convolutional neural networks. And um, so let's move on to, um, so, so we, have, we, have, we have the idea of how to design the convolutional neural networks. And uh, the next thing is like, uh, we need to collect more data, right? So the first one is the collected by Yonlequin, Yonlequin uh, in the year of 1998, which is quite simple. The handwritten digits data set. So this obviously cannot satisfy many of the tasks. We need a more complex data set. And then this uh, 20, 2009 um, by Alex and Geoffrey and the, the they, they collect this uh, CFR 10 data set. We see the 10, 10 categories of images of uh, um, 50K images training for training and 10K for, uh, uh, for, for testing. 
And uh, this is also quite simple and very low resolution. It's like 22 by 22 size of a small, tiny, um, can, can probably tiny, tiny images. And we need, we need more. Like if we want to do face or we want to recognize um, to do a lot of real world application, we need more. So this one is the, um, there is, you know, this year, 20, 2009 and 2000, uh, 2005, it's called the Pascal VOC. So it's a data set for segmentation, not just um, a image classification, uh, it's segmentation. So to, to have a rectangle, it's called the bounding box, um, to, to box out all the objects inside of the image. This is, uh, there's a competition. There's a segment, um, object detection, object detection, not segmentation. Uh, so the object detection competition, um, um, organized based on this data set that has 20 classes and the competition ends on 2000, 2012. Like it was a, uh, around the time that 2012, um, starting from 2000, people in the state, we need even a uh, uh, bigger data set. So, um, that's what's between the small and bigger data set. So, big data sets, here, here we go, we have the image net. Uh, which was released in the year of 2012, right? Um, so, yeah, and and from from 2012 and 2017, uh, it's also organized a large scale image recognition competition um, uh, organized every year. It's called the ILSVRC, the Image uh, ImageNet Large Scale Viral Recognition Competition, which is basically um, uh, image classific classification tasks, also called the image recognition tasks. Mm -hmm. Uh, this data set is behind behind um, many of the big breakthroughs in computer vision, and uh, from the year 2012 to the year of 2020, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, and uh, even uh, now, even uh, nowadays, we still train large train models on ImageNet. Okay, um, so and another. Uh, very big big data set is called Microsoft Coco, which is a uh, uh, much a large scale version of the uh, Pascal uh, VOC is a segmentation is object detection auto segmentation uh, data set. Uh, it has this 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 are the statistics like uh, 380 80 object categories and 95 uh, 91 staff categories and so and so on. So this is a large scale uh, data set as well. Uh, so even that is for classification and this one is for segmentation and the localization and and so on basically finding objects inside of image and uh so the image uh as we mentioned the image net competition is behind many of the big breakthroughs in deep learning um so it's competition hosted from the year of 20 you know 20 2010 or probably started uh 2012 uh, attracted a lot of attention. So 2010 and 2011 is not uh, like a still shallow, not deep learning. Uh, it's a, a shallow, shallow network or uh, traditional. So starting from uh, 2012 to 2015. So the uh, top five test error on this uh, uh, even that the competition uh, dropped significantly year after year. And uh, 2012 is a big breakthrough by AlexNet. It's, uh, it has eight, layer, eight layers and then uh, 13 and, and then 19 layers can achieve a 70, 70, 70 point, a 7.3 top five error. And then, you know, as the layer goes deeper and deeper and, uh, in the year of 20, uh, 2015, um, it's a, we have a rest net. This, uh, uh, has 152 layers and it has 3.57 uh, top five error, which is better than, you know, uh, surpass the human level performance. Um, so you can see that the neural net, neural networks that goes deeper and deeper. So that's the that's the, the the that's the time we call you know deep learning, deep learning because uh, deep learning the concept of deep learning got even more popular than machine learning. Um, that goes deeper and deeper. Okay. So yeah, to a little bit of the statistics, the training set of the even that is one point four million images and have validation set and test set and has uh one thousand one thousand um. And image categories, 1,000 classes. So actually training uh, deepness from those competitions all these years, we find that training deep neural networks are quite easy. So as long as you got data, uh, we set up some optimizer and uh, we choose a model. We choose a model. You have to make this decision, which is a, a kind of like a hyper parameter you choose. 
you have to cho choose the model. Um, and then you know, we you define some objective function. You just let the uh, uh, let the CPU handle the rest of the, of the computation. You will get a quite good model in the end. So that's because training deep learning is quite easy, right? So you don't need to design the things. You just throw data into the network and let the computation do the job. Uh, that is so easy. So and 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 um, deep neural nets can also interpretable at uh, certain levels. Uh, for example, we know that convolutional networks extract uh, you know corners or shapes and lines at the shallow layers, and learn to perceive you know to to uh, to perceive the uh, the shapes and abstract uh, abstract high level abstra abstractions at the deep layers, and eventually can give you some prediction of a, a class and. Uh, so that's yeah yeah so 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 um based on this understanding what we what we do what we do we, we just go deeper right so we adding more and more layers so we um so by adding more and more layers we believe that the network will learn more fine fine grained uh fine grained um all levels of uh, features because each level is some uh, each layer representing some level of features uh, so we add more layers we can learn more features we can learn you know we can we can get up their classifier. So deep learning going going deep. Okay. So um, let's have we need, we need deep models that what we know. So let's have a look at the layers and parameters of that uh, deep learning era of um, um, deep models. Okay. So Alex Nath, the winner of that ImageNet competition in 2012, has um, have that top five era and the 60 million parameters. And uh, yeah, so quite famous. Um, Quite big breakthrough and very famous uh, net, uh, neural net model. And second, second one, not that famous, but uh, it's the winner of uh, the competition in 2013, and it has a, a big drop in the test top five era. It's achieved 11.7 uh, uh, top five era and 60 million parameters. So the parameter is basically the same. There's some optimization on the current uh, filters. So the AlexNet uses uh, you know five by five, five by five, some convolutional filters, and this one used larger, like so. Uh, I think it's seven by seven or eleven by eleven uh, filter size, seven. Okay. So and and the, the parameters are almost the same, but performance improve a lot. So basically, we use large reception field in the cell layers, and then it comes the Google Net. So it's also called the Inception V1 or Google Inception V1 version one. So the winner of a 20, 2014 competition. So it says a 6.667 top five error, which is you know almost half, um, you know half of that that uh, previous previous winner, and it's uh you know surprisingly got twenty times less parameters. So it's going very deep, but with less parameters. This uh, proves that you know it's called the going deeper with convolutions. So going deep then then necessarily cause you more parameters. So that is, uh, I think it's a very clever design of the Google. Uh, that's the, um, yeah, anyway, so let's move on to the rest now. So it's the winner of uh, 2015 is reduced error directly, you know, all the way to 3.57. Uh, it's the passing human level performance. Um, uh, it's a, it has 152 layers. They have 60 million parameters, you know, which is of, of roughly the same as the AlexNet or the same as the DFNet, right? So, um, and and yeah. So the thing is, like, uh, even if we have, so at that time, actually, um, going deep to 100 layers is very exciting. That's also the time I started my PhD at the University of Melbourne. So at that time, when we talk about, you know, in the year of 2012, 2012, I was uh, I was uh, studying my master degree in Tsinghua University, one of the top universities in China. So when the professors teaching machine learning, when we talk about deep nets, the professors, you know, there's some light in his uh, his eyes, right? So talking about deep neural, are you guys interested in deep learning? You know, you want to do some experiments at that time. So even if we have like an experiment with uh, three or four years and everyone got ex very ex uh, excited. And in the year of 2015, where when I studied my PhD degree, when we, people talk about 100 layers, people got very excited. Like, oh, can you, you go even that deep? You know, uh, we know that 20 or 40, maybe 50 layers is, uh, you know, um, out of our mind. So, so 100 layers at that time can only um, achievable by uh, Meta or Facebook at that time or Google. So anyway, so the one, one first time over 100 layers, now we even uh, goes beyond a thousand layers, which is crazy. 
So, and then in the year of 2017, almost like two years after that, we didn't realize nowadays, you know, there's a big breakthrough in 2017. So people call attention is all you need, introducing a completely new type of DNA. So that's just not a, of a, of a claim. I think, I believe it's a completely different type. So it's uh, not the same as a uh, convolution, not the same as a recurrent neural network, as completely different the same. But uh, at least the same, same, the core of that, that's new, a transformer model is the called the attention. Uh, to be at high level explanation, attention is that you replicate your input into three pieces. Uh, three uh, pieces. For example, I have an input of a, a vector. I just replicate and just multiply and uh, with some parameters by itself. That's it. It's just some uh, dot product. That's the called attention. Um, if you multiply something with something, that's called the attention. That's called uh, actually, if the two things, two vectors are not the same, it's called the cross attention because uh, multiply across different uh, systematic meanings or something. But anyway, so a multi head attention means you replicate the souls, many things. Uh, this is the operation of the structure by multiple times, and they give you a multiple output and basically a stacking technology. Um, that's it. So. And, uh, and 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 self attention means like uh, you you duplicate like for example the example input is a welcome which is uh, you know have the vector to represent one o one o and uh, you know you know o o two o two or one 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 so it's called welcome to uh, Luxembourg and then you just um, um, you rep replicate those things and uh, you know uh, add some parameter and and to to dot product with this one and this one and this one so there's you know. Um, so, so self attention is just about you know the input are just these three input vectors. There's nothing else, okay? And you have to do a lot of uh, you know dot product between themselves. That's the self attention. That's it. You got three output. It's quite easy. So uh, it goes into the box and goes out of the box. It's quite easy. There's nothing uh, else. But inside of inside of it, it's purely dot product. So that's a quick explanation. And um, it turns out that this type of uh, architecture, this new types of neural network can do both language uh, because it's a sequence sort of modeling, but it can do language, uh, language and, uh, and yeah, vision tasks. The reason is that this paper released in 2021 at the iClear conference um, is, is called, uh, is divide an image into 60, 16 by 16 patches and treat each of the patch as a word or as a token. So you can divide one image at the left and to 16 by 16, by 16 patches, and uh, you treat them like a sequence of words and input is in cool, a transformer network. And the, uh, the output, you do some, uh, add some, uh, you know, um, some, some, some output, uh, you know, uh, head of the uh, head module, and it give it to, to do prediction. It give you pre predict the classes like bird, ball, or car. So actually this proved that uh, transformer architecture can do vision vision tasks can deal you know deal with the uh, images and can do even better than convolutional neural network, neural networks that's uh, this work um you know uh, triggers the great unity between the languages and the images uh, visions and the nlp uh, languages and uh, uh, and visions uh, and images so that's why we have big models, multi 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 model model okay um so basically, we can use a giant model to do all kinds of tasks, at least the European model at the same time. So uh, that's, I think that's also the reason why we got a, you know, a much bigger models than, than we used to, we used to, okay? So, and uh, let's have a look at training large language models. Um, the language model, okay, I'll just probably just to skip, uh, YouTube term model. So basically, let's just have a quick look. Okay. So the input is like she choose an assistant. She chooses to make a salad for lunch tomorrow and Sunday. And the question is, how long uh, did it take for her to make a salad? And uh, you can train the large language model uh, using uh, some instruction tasks. It's called the training task. The instruction is response yes if, if the sentence contains an explicit answer to the given question. Otherwise, just just indicate no. So the instruction is list all the words related to the question and um, for answer the question correctly. Here are some examples. You can train the model on this sort of a 
uh, instructed uh, task in, in instructions. And then at the evaluation, you can ask the model to do something else, something related, but else. It's called like uh, indicate the type of a temperature, uh, temporal phenomenon in the following question, blah, blah, and uh, uh, something else. To, for example, to answer the event duration, the duration. And then um, when when trained, uh, we trained and, and, and tune all these tasks, eventually I think you can, uh, so those are the answers of, for these for these questions. And eventually you can ask a model like say, uh, how long does it take for her to make a salad? And it will give you an answer 30 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour. Okay. So those tasks are related, but not exactly the answer. And you can train on these tasks and ask the model model to do to answer this question um, um, answer this question. So this gives more freedom, like end to end uh, training, uh, because this task can, can be easily designed. Okay, so probably finding the answers is not that easy, but design those those in, uh, uh, instruction based training tasks are easy. So we can train those large language models uh, to do this task, and then uh, we call it pre training pre training, and then. Uh, use the prompt. Prompt is this one. So uh, um, prompt is like a easy, easy interpret, uh, understand, interpretation of prompt is like a, a question. This is a question. Uh, for example, um, and the, the this class is, and then the, the language model will complete an uh, answer and do the uh, prediction. Uh, pre prediction. Okay. So let's have a look at how ChatGPT is trained. So suppose we already have a pre-trained large language model, um, train all the big corpus. And 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 but it doesn't give you a chat GPT. It doesn't give you the ability to chat or do dialogue. Um, but to do that, we have to based on the large language model and to do something else. Uh, basically, to give this ability to to do um, uh, uh, chat. Okay. So the first step is we have to give give the model a, a set of a, a sample a chat, sample response, sample questions, and sample answers. So we have to basically collect the demonstration data. So this data by OpenAI in the technical report is collected roughly by 40, um, 40, human, um, 40 uh, humans, I think, uh, 40 participants, and they write these uh, answers for, exam for the questions uh, uh, manually. So uh, for example, the question is explain the mowing learning to a six, six year old. And then uh, it will ask them to write the answer. Like some people want to the moon. Those are the example answers called demonstration data. And this data, um, we 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 fine tune the language model to, to on this data. And next step is we uh, and uh, we we learn we have to learn a reinforcement learning model to um, judge what type of uh, generate uh, answer is better than the other than the other. So because we have to we have to let the model know what is a good answer or what is bad. So it's learning to reinforce the money agent to um to how to then to rank then answers. So for each of the input, the model will ask the model to generate 20 answers and will learn train the agent to say which answer is you know, you know, D is better than C, is better than A, and is equal to B. And then you will encourage the model to generate, you know, the good answers to the to the good answers to D. So this process is also called the RH, you know, reinforcement like ILHF, um, reinforced learning uh, from a human uh, with human feedback. So basically, by doing this, we can align human values or you know those same sort of things with uh, the language models because you know the language model obviously have a imitation sort of a behavior to imitate what we like to to satisfy what our uh, the user's preference so if we believe you know, this answer is better than the other one and the model will generally always give you a better you know the answer you like not the answer you don't you don't like so the third step is we have we still need to do um to to optimize the policy and 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 to do to do tuning and uh and with more data and uh sorry the yeah, with more data and do some up, update and optimization, and it will get better and better. So there are some uh, iterations, uh, certain iterations we have to here. So eventually, you get a, a chat GPT will give you the always give you the correct answer and the positive answer, and uh, the answer then surprise you is uh, like really even more professional than uh, your what you know your friends. Okay, so yeah, so be. 
So let's have a look of the how to train a multi model. So we have uh, talked about the vision model, train a large vision model, train a large uh, language model, and now we talked about how to train how to train multi model model like a uh, text to image. So basically, you have you have two stream. Like uh, for example, this one is the clip. Clip is a pre trained model that have a, a description of the image. So it's a pair, the text and the image pair. So the text goes into a text encoder, which is a, uh, some sort of a, a, a text model. And the image goes to the image encoder and it will output something embeddings and the embeddings will do a cross, cross align. So this is uh, called the alignment. And we want, our purpose is want that we want the image with its original, its, its true description is associated the description to have like uh, to uh, fire this diagonal um, indexes like uh, where they match and um, to minimize the rest of the metric okay so um and then and then and then uh, at, at test time at at, um, at test time we can we can have a, a photo of uh, some object and goes into the text encoder and text encoder and uh, also um sorry uh so, uh, yeah, so let's have a look. So create data set classifier. Okay. So this is the approach to how to create the classifier. So this training does not give you a classifier, like giving an input to, uh, give you, uh, give you an, uh, a class of the input. So classification is easy. You just, uh, need, you know, um, need, need to, take input some sort of a classes here is a placeholder to put different classes and goes into the text encoder get text embedding and get the image here and go to the image embedding and do a cross matching like say who matches uh, who like if the this one matches with the photo of a dog embedding text embedding then it's a photo of dog uh so yeah so um and the next thing I want to talk about is basically put up everything happens uh, happens in March. It's called the uh, some people would call in in the AI field called the crazy March for AI because there are so many things going on in in the last month. Uh, this begins in actually in fe February uh, February 9th. Uh, there's a tool former released. Basically, it's a language model that learns to utilize different tools. If you can allow a language model to use tools, it can do so many things like searching agents and, you know, calculators and weathers and so many things. So it operates in a self supervised manner and it operates with simple API calls. So that's the tool former, which, um, which is um, um, probably behind many of the, uh, uh, the, the, the OMI or Microsoft uh, um, uh, uh, tools and the second one is that we already mentioned is a llama released on February twenty fourth uh, by uh, Meta, the first large open source large language model, and the you know uh, in March eighth uh, of March is is released by Microsoft. I think uh, also released by Microsoft is called the Visual Chat GPT. So Chat GPT can only do dialogue, like uh, you know, question answering dialogue. And it cannot do visual. And this one can do visual. It's a new model that combines Chat GPT with large language models. So basically, you can type in a prompt and uh, to to do editing, to do to edit the image, to get the shapes, to get the outlines, and you know, to change the styles. So on. It basically gives the power to to do um, to to, to visual tasks. Um, yeah, so it's it's a combination of chat GPT with some other image image tool, you know, vision vision models and uh, image editing tools. And uh, on March uh, 9th of March, so next very next day, um, see I think it's Nvidia or Google, or Google released a Giga, Giga Gun, Gun. So the fusion model has now become the very popular, uh, and people talk about whether GAN can do the same. If you model have some uh, shortcomings, uh, for example, it's very time consuming to generate one single image, but GAN can do one single pass and give it, and it have a certain advantage in the efficiency. So there's a, so it used, used to be small GANs, but now we got a giga man, extremely large. A large GAN model have 1 billion parameters, and it's proof of text to image synthesis for GAN is very feasible and very efficient. Um, and it synthesize, can synthesize very high resolution images. And on the 13th of uh, March, uh, and, and this APCA, Stanford team um, released this APCA. Um, uh, and also 14th of March, OpenAI released the chat GPT-4. So uh, GPT-4, GPT you can also call it chat GPT-4, GPT-4. Basically, it can chat, it can also um, 
It's also base language model. It's a large um, base language model. Yeah, it can take an input uh, the image and text and answer the questions and to interpret what the content inside of the image and uh, give you the NASA, so, which is um, um, uh, very brilliant. And uh, on the 14th of March, and uh, just uh, on the same day, uh, there's uh, Google released the Palm, uh, which is um, the pathway language model. It's also some uh, Google I was uh, hoping design. to send today, design. but it's not that crucial. I mean, better to finish up. So yeah, large language model and uh, okay. yes, in the, yeah. released by Google uh, is a self-taught next generation can do uh, self-taught next generation search, and then on the fifteenth of March is really uh, Mid Journey releases a five version it's called V five Mid Journey V five. Probably many of you have known Mid Journey, which is very good at generate uh, like a photorealistic and artistic style, very creative uh, images based on the the prompts. Mm. Uh, and also, it's on the 16th of March, um, Microsoft released the Copilot, which is basically Office suit to help you with your meetings, uh, with summarize your meetings, and do a lot of many other read papers and emails, and many more. Um, yeah. So next, next thing I want to talk about is the problem of uh, large language models. The problem. Of, I'm a little bit over time, and the problem of the large language model, language uh, large models. Large language and vision models, um, uh, they are not perfect. There are many, many, many other problems that we have to shouldn't overlook. So the first one is the generation of pornographic or violence or many other you know fake images. So those are the examples and uh, taken from the um, um, open op uh, the the APIs of this uh, image uh, image generation models like Mid Journey and the Stable Diffusion. Um, uh, there is actually in the uh, not not very so uh, not very um, so after the stable diffusion, I think there's a project called unstable diffusion, uh, specifically designed to generate pornographic images and released a, a lot of uh, pornographic images on the web, which was I think um, closed uh, sometime, but uh, this could also happen um, in the future as well. Uh, this may yeah may happen in the future as well. So. Uh, the, the second problem is the data leakage and copyright violation. So many um, artists are not happy about uh, stable diffusion and the mid journey because uh, the artistic style, many of the styles are borrowed from uh, from the famous artistic uh, artists, and there are some lawsuits, uh, copyright lawsuit behind behind the scene. So um, because for, for example, this paper um, by the um, Maryland and uh, the others I can't remember. It's called diffusion art or digital forgery. So basically, it's find many of the generated content, generated images are actually uh, largely borrowed from directly copied from the pen and paper. So it's hard to say it's not violation of copyright, right? It's, uh, it's also a form of data leakage. Um, suppose if you type your name. Uh, type your name to the model and the model uh, out of your face image that basically your information has been memorized into that model and it could be leaked because if I, if I don't uh, know your, if I know your name, I can get your images very easily from those models. So that's the problem, like a uh, memorization and data leakage. And the, the, second, the second very closely related problem is called the privacy leakage. Uh, it turns out that uh, it's not the conclusion in that this paper. Uh, the paper by Niklas Carlini. Uh, it's not a conclusion from this paper, but I've um, observed from 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 the examples given in this paper. I find that probably those uh, large vision models are very good at memorized faces. Uh, probably this is understandable if it is true. This is just my guess uh, because you know we have a unique face. Everyone has a unique face, and probably. Uh, we have a unique name, so it's not surprising that the large people will memorize these images because you know because name and very unique correlation, and uh, it's hard to, to forget about the model. Um, probably I'll I'll, 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 I'll conduct the experiment to test whether this is true. But from my observation, and this is indeed the, the case. Uh, this could cause some privacy leakage. And uh, uh, the problem with the uh, language models, large language models, is because sometimes it made a mistake. It made mistakes, but in a very confident tone, confident way. For example, the university, uh, if asked about, like, uh, when the, uh, when the uh, when it's introduced the University of uh, Luxembourg, it said it's the only university in the country, but it actually is, it's not. I, I tried to Google, I find that there are my many uh, five universities. Um, uh, 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 two universities in two business school, and, and I don't know 
uh, whether this is true, but uh, the audience, you can tell me whether this is true. And, and but but from the description, if you don't know this, and probably you will believe it's the only only university in the country. And it happens in many of those answers. Like if you're not an expert, you, it's very hard to say this is true or false. And uh, it's like a mix of like you know accurate information and misinformation. That makes everything so. Um, I think is problematic. Um, uh, I, I, this is one of the problems of large language models. They always give you something uh, mi mixed, uh, not very, uh, not always accurate. Um, that's not a guarantee. And the second information, uh, the second problem with the uh, large language model is the leak of sensitive information. You can imagine that this is a study by also by Carini uh, with the GPT-2 uh, in the year of uh, 20. Uh, in the year of 2020, uh, released in 2020, uh, December. So GPT-2, like, it, it turns out that if you uh, you're tempting, it gives you the tempting prompts, like, you know, um, typing your name, uh, your name or some some address, it will give you, it prompts out something that's um, quite private, like your your email address or your, your phone number. If you type your name, it will give you something else. So basically, the language model to memorize those information. For example, it memorize your name. Aside of your name, it's always like a email address and something else. You know, from the web pages they learn. Uh, they learn. Uh, it turns out as long as you give the right prompt, you can uh, lure the model to output this sensitive personal information or even uh, social security numbers and uh, and and uh, other 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 numbers uh, and other sensitive information. Um, okay, so. Um, so, and also the thing is like, we have chat GPT, it turns out that even talk, uh, to chat GPT, talk to chat GPT, um, is, is, can be a problem. Uh, the thing is like, uh, your question may, 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 uh, consist of very private information about your company, about your, uh, your emotion, about your status or locations and so on. This is uh, in the news. I'm not sure if it's true. I just put it here. It said that some 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 introduced ChatGPT in their pipeline or working uh, in, uh, for their to uh, you know, uh, for their employee to you know uh, to 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 for the work in the workspace. But but in less than 20, 20 days, it turns out there are three data breaches, and you know, one happens to uh, one of uh, one of the employee. Uh, copy some code into the chat GPT and ask the GPT to find bug and fix bug. Actually, the code is type of confidential uh, code. It, and then also the other employee, I think it's uh, um, uh, uh, it's write some 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 article, some 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 um, um, uh, some paper or some some um, statistics about uh, their default rate about semi semiconductor or some uh, configurations or. In, in, manufacturing details about the semiconductor and it turns out we will submit those questions into ChatGPT and ChatGPT uh, early version. I think now the latest version has fixed that problem. Early version will save that uh, question and that will release uh, um, uh, leak your private information. So it's quite quite scary. Many of you may realize that even talk to people and, and, and can the question itself can release your secret because, you know, um, anyway, so I, I guess in the future, if we use CBT, we know how to answer the, we have to learn to, uh, to uh, ask the right question. Okay. So, um, and, and, and so all the way, uh, all, all the way of reviewing all these large models and, and, and technique and training things and data set. And, uh, I have to make a, a final conclusion. So my, my, this is only. Uh, stand for my own perspective of large language model. I personally view large um, large models in general as databases. I think there are not uh, much, not like we, we can't interpret these models. Probably is not the best way to interpret those models in learning and human intelligence. But mostly, most of the time, this large language model is more like a databases uh, because it's all about how to compress big data, a lot of data into the model, so that uh, the bigger the model, the better uh, the compression or the memorization. Um, and and, and the, it's all about how to find the right way to prompt it out. And, and prompt is just a query. And, uh, and, uh, and the pre-training is the process of creating as many index value pairs as, as possible. So that's why we need large data set and a lot big models. And this uh, has nothing to do with uh, the traditional statistical machine learning. So that's my understanding. So attention, the attention mechanism is the way how to, we, we make the index and, uh, and values to, to make the, this uh, correlation and association. 
And uh, the bigger the model and the larger the database and the accurate the information you can save, the more information you can save. And uh, you know, this allows you to give you something um, called the emerging intelligence, uh, this, this phenomenon. And the, the most of the time you got accurate retrievals, but uh, it's not guaranteed. So there's something like uh, accurate, something blurry, quite blurry, but not, not quite accurate. There's some misinformation mixed in, in the answers. And um, so from this perspective, language model, large models are not AGI. So it does not have intelligent, uh, no. So, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to write experiment and conduct research to prove this perspective. I think it's a long way. And um, from my observation, it's like uh, large language mo large language models, chat GPT, indeed emerge some sort of a, a level of intelligence because it can answer the questions very cleverly and it can reject your um, uh, reject your uh, some illegal questions. Uh, um, so and anyway, so um, but the thing is, like uh, sometimes it also makes me to think about these things from uh, uh, a diff from the other perspective. So from uh, uh, from um, the um, the offset side, offset perspective. So because like um, um, so if you think about how human brains work or how human language system work, is that to, you know to think about how you what's your daily what you're doing every day is like we human perceive all kinds of information at the same time right so we talk to people and see a lot of different things every day and we try to compress and understand the information in our own ways that's the way of compressing information to memorize your um, brain you know cortex and uh, the neurons into the neurons and and, and uh, we find that we find our own ways to extract those things because you know we read books we read we read books we learn knowledge and we talk to people in our own ways everyone has their own uh, um, own ways of talking and, and expression. Okay, so that is very similar to large language models, and um, and we all humans we always we always want to associate things. We associate the uh, you know new concept into the old ones, the new information with the old information. We talk about things, you know, talk about uh, someone has a new a baby, you know, we 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 immediately link to how how they look, how they smile, and how 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 that night you had a very very um, you know, you know lovely dinner together or something you you have a link to the information this is very like the uh, attention mechanism actually and um yes and as humans we always compress the information into easy conclusions like oh we don't like it we like it you know we hate it uh, we we get up early in the morning that's what we remember tonight and you know we have to have lunch in the next uh, 10 minutes or so that's the easy easy conclusions we are not care about you know we our body need it we, we didn't, you know, yeah so Easy conclusions. That's that's what we uh, fired by our brains. Uh, compress information into easy conclusions and try, and we try to find logics behind everything. There is so many things that, that there is no not logic, but we always try to find logic. We find why, like why why are you talking like this? Why why you go there? Why you do this type of planning? It's not blah blah. We try to reason in. We try to read um, reflect to reflective thinking. Uh, uh, there are so many things to try. So this is a, from this sense is we are very similar to large language models. So that eventually we, uh, based on this sort of things, uh, we make decisions and answer questions logically step by step. Like like uh, like uh, I'm doing this talk, uh, you know what what? So my words are always coming out of one word after the other, which is very like the. Uh, uh, ultra aggressive language models, learning to predict what the next word is. You know, when I think about that word, that probably will add some, you know, random, add some randomness inside of my talking and say, okay, I'm not going to say it because most of the people say it. I'm trying to want to add something that is, um, uh, you know, uh, clever or make my talking more, um, um, inside more or something. We, we try to change words, right? This is, uh, this is very similar to, uh, uh, you know, this step by step, word by word talking, step by step thinking, step by step problem problem solving. It's very much like the um, a large language model. So when I think about it, you know, uh, humans are not so intelligent, and human brains are probably large large models. Um, you know, if, uh, fundamentally, probably just large language model, large neuron neurons, neuron neuron based or neuron models. So. Yeah, so from this perspective, we I, I personally believe we are not far from much bigger breakthroughs, much bigger findings.
probably large language model can help in another way, help us to understand, you know, our human brains you know, or the other way around. Probably they are equivalent at certain levels from certain perspectives. So that's what we offer to this um, talk. I think 20 minutes over over time. So that that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ma. Yeah. Thank you very much for this very uh, interesting and insightful lecture. Um, uh, now we can take a few minutes if you have any questions so, or any comments or remarks, so do not hesitate. Uh, you can use your microphone or um, you can also uh, send your question through the chat box. Like me, I'm chair box. No question. <laughs> okay. No, everything, uh, everything is all right, or it's uh, can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. First, thank you very much for this inspiring uh, presentation, especially for someone who is not working in the topic. I'm economist. So my question, from what I understood about the AI currently, uh, there is, I don't know if there is really the competition between China and the US. From what seems like, at, from the economic point of view, uh, China has a lot of publication related to AI, but US has a lot of productions uh, from the AI. Uh, can you explain a little bit of the situation, the competition between US, China, and also EU? I think I think in this round, in this weave of uh, AI as big advancement, and the US is definitely. Uh, Far away from you know uh, from China, so we are a bit of a uh, behind. So now it's like the industry and the academia in China here. We we try to you know uh, to catch up. So uh, the thing the thing is like um, I think there are there are there are many challenges we have to solve before we achieve that level of you. Know, we can train we can even train as large language models. You know computational resources and. Uh, uh, high quality, high quality, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, training data. So high quality, I mean, you know, in the, the, the Western culture and the English language is very mature and uh, have a lot of uh, uh, well solved, uh, well formatted answers, I would say, and there's firm and many creative answers and so on. But in Chinese community, we don't have that high quality answers and that's data to train basically. Um, so, so data and computational resources as well. So computational resources, uh, you know, the difference is like, you know, US has the big companies like uh, Google, Facebook, and they have uh, these giant companies have so many computer resources, but in China, we do have um, since time or, or Baidu or Huawei, Huawei yeah. uh, but it's uh, yeah, still, still a little bit of a, you know, uh, Early uh, stage. behind. Yeah. But uh, I think uh, those techniques are not so, um, and also bottleneck techniques, I think, because as long as you got the resources, you got the data, and you can also do a similar uh, type of uh, work. So eventually we will catch up. But the thing is, like, uh, I'm, I think I'm, we are more in intrigued to know what the mechanism behind, because knowing that can we we know, uh, you know, um, what's the future of science or AI, mm -hmm. and, and what that can do. Can influence our you know our daily lives or the society in general the you know so that that that's the things that we 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 intrigued to know i think uh, engineering perspective we will eventually it will the, the gap will be closer and closer yeah oh yeah, i think I there, there's a... yeah, the, in the chat there is a question is ai creative in your opinion and I think I would combine this question with my question together. You also mentioned about the, I mean, the data related to the human way of thinking. And though, at least in, our, in economics, we also have the word because we are also using a lot of data 
And nowadays in the economic study, we somehow switch, I mean, changing from theoretical study to data analysis and to recommend policy. Someone has a saying, I mean, the big data and the AI is like uh, building up a church or cathedral, then we worship into it. So, I mean, from your point of view, would be that is the leading direction that is also could be, I mean, the AI's creation or the future society, society's direction. Yeah, I think that's true. So, uh, so there's a, there's a question in the in the chat is called uh, is AI creative in my opinion. So, uh, you want to answer? So, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I, I think AI is definitely cre creative. Uh, creative than me so at least i think uh, we are just average people so it's a uh, creative than most of uh, average people so if you are average people then it's more creative than you so it's the thing is like big data i think big data provides as you mentioned provides a different pers perspective of seeing the whole thing so it's big data is not about you know the, it's, it's how to say that the, um the size is not uh, not that much. The matters is the view you see the problem. So big data gives you a different view. So that gives you something you can't draw from small data. So you can draw a big data conclusion, and then the conclusion will be true for most of the people. So like recommendations, do recommendation policy, uh, policy making, and so on, decision making. So I think that just makes uh, how to do that. It's just a uh, so if you. Yeah, if you know if you know the big data by yourself, you will do better than AI. But uh, we don't have that time to do it, so <laughs> we don't have the time to do it. And uh, AI can do this very efficiently, and it appears like more creative than most of us. So I have to say, appears than most of us. It's just because it sees more, uh, it draws more reliable conclusion, and it views the whole things in different perspective. Yeah, we can only from our, you know, from our own perspective of this world, right? So this, uh, this is some kind of, kind of a narrow, very narrow sort of view. But AI is very open, yeah. We also have a question so I think from, that, I'm sorry, yeah. sorry. Go on. Go ahead, Geoffrey. No, no, no I, I, we have another question, but maybe you haven't finished yet. Sorry. So, uh, yeah, the other big major breakthrough, I think, uh, uh, in terms of AI, probably our model will go go. Will, our model will goes bigger and bigger, and it will eventually take the whole information available on the internet uh, to do something that is even more creative. I would say, and uh, the the. Um, but I'm afraid that you know if the AI um, is is taking over most of our um, how to say if AI is um, provide more better better answers than most of us, and then I'm afraid well no one will try to answer questions on the internet. So it will be AI answer questions on the internet, and then the next generation AI will taking this generation AI's generation and to learn to evolve. So, uh, so I think the breakthroughs will be yeah. So uh, new ways of inter new ways of um, communication. Uh, knowledge, knowledge, uh, um, even you know, learning, uh, communication, um, surfing, and yeah. So it's it's hard to see, but 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 I, I mean, yeah, it's hard to predict actually. Yeah, <laughs> except that everything will go speak. <laughs> Is there any maybe a last question to to end this uh, this lecture? I I did send you a private uh, question, but uh, uh, I do have a funny one. Since he can code, can he reprogram it himself? Did, do we risk that, or there are safety measure, measures for it? I'm sorry, what was the question? Uh, he can make code. He can code. 
Yeah. So you can code, yeah. Can he program itself? Can he give himself prompts to do something? Uh, I'm afraid there are already similar sort of uh, projects available. It's called the Auto Auto GPT. Auto GPT from the name of that project. You can see the GPT can uh, learn to design prompts for what is what is asked to do. So it's a it's a, it's a prompt itself. It prompts the GPT to do things step by step and call different plugins and tools and uh, in code. Yeah, <laughs> that's physics. <laughs> So it's kind of like a loop. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid that's that's it's true. But that's is also kind of scary. So, so I'm I'm trying to become a full stack developer. Maybe I'm going out of be out of a job. I lost connection. Oh, well, you can full stack. Yeah. <laughs> but you can oh yeah <laughs> maybe i bet in the wrong profession <laughs> I, I, yeah i'm not no no, no. i mean i'm uh, yeah so so yeah it's, 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 it's the to wrong say. profession I mean, what scary. you need it's to do is go scary. one step farther one step before okay the link you posted uh, I have sent you a question. Uh, are we allowed to to download the the content of the the for, whole meeting for the, for the slides? Yes. Yeah, I had a similar question actually. Um, uh, we will as you as you uh, as you saw. Sorry, we we recorded this lecture, and this lecture will be online uh, on our uh, Confucius Institute uh, YouTube page. So you will be able to, to, you know, watch again this uh, lecture with those slides. Uh, about the slides, we have to ask uh, Professor Mai if he agrees to, to, um, to send them. But in any case, uh, the, okay. the whole lecture will be online on our okay. YouTube page. So well, it's just because I, I have ADHD and I zone out sometimes. And sometimes the connection was not uh, perfect neither. So yes, it, it's easier for me to focus on reading uh, quietly, but uh, okay. If it's possible, I would love to, uh, if it's not, okay. Is this yeah, the link? You can, you can find my email uh, by searching my name on um, using ChatGPT or Google, and I'll send you via the email. So for those who want to use the, who want to read the slides. Okay. Otherwise, you can for the whole for people who want who want to download the PPT, you can send us an email if you want, and uh, Malaush, if you want to send us your PPT, and we will uh, transfer it to all the people who ask for it. What do you think? Yeah, that also works. As you wish, no problem. Then, okay. Okay. Um. I take the opportunity to tell you that I, I put the, the website of our Confucius Institute in the chat box. Uh, in that case, if you want to know more about the, the next events and activities, you can check on our website, then we, you will be informed. Um, before we end, I would like to thank again, Professor uh, Masin Jun for his uh, very interesting conference. And also many thanks to all of you for coming. Uh, for information, we have a monthly, uh, I mean, apart from that, we have a monthly Chinese cinema cycle and the next film screening will be next Thursday, 19 April at the Cercle Cité in Luxembourg City. So it's still time to register. If you want to, to participate or sign up, do not hesitate to send an email uh, to um, this address. And then you're more than welcome. Okay, so... Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Free, thanks everyone. See you. Thanks everyone and uh see you uh see you later then. All right. Bye bye. Thank you.